Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome back. We have something real fun for you. Um, I bought some more samurai treasure just the other day. <laughs> and uh, what I got is a matchlock firearm. Uh, this thing is at least 250, probably 300 years old. Wow. It's uh, made out of wood and iron. It's based off of a Portuguese model, and that's where the guns came from in Japan. Wow. This is super cool. Yeah. What, um, how does it work? Oh, so how's it, okay, we'll talk about how it works first. So... <clears throat> This is called a muzzle loader type of weapon, which means you have to put your charge into the muzzle of the gun. You pour your powder in, you put a uh, uh, usually paper wrapped bullet that goes in, or a, they, it was a ball actually, and then you take your ramrod out and then you ram it into the muzzle. Uh, when you're done with that, you pour powder into this little pan here and then you close it and then you put a burning match into this thing it's usually called a serpentine and then when you're ready to fire you open up this pan and when you pull the trigger this will snap down well mm -hmm. now the mechanism is so old I don't want to press the trigger and snap it down I'm just gonna show it to everybody here. but it does work uh, I don't know. I haven't tried it. Yes. <laughs> I don't want to break it. Yeah, I, wouldn't, I, wouldn't I spent too much money on this thing. <laughs> <laughs> so, and there's a site. Is that what that yes. piece is? Yeah, there is a site here. It's got a little ridge in here, and you can, you know, you can match it up, and you can fire this thing. And you said that you don't put the stock against your. No, uh, no, you shoot it out like this. You'll see drawings. Um, artwork of uh, samurai firing these things and it's very interesting because uh, one day in the mid 1500s a ship kind of had to uh, got a little distracted due to a storm and landed on the island of Tanegashima uh, which is in Japan and the kind of the warlord guy who ran it uh, was very interested in the ship because it contained a lot of Chinese and a few Portuguese guys. And they had never seen Portuguese people before. And because the, um, because the ship came up from the south, they assumed that these barbarians lived in the south. So they called them Namban, which means Southern Barbarian. <laughs> and, uh, but these barbarians had these really cool weapons. And they put on a demonstration. And this warlord, he could not speak Chinese, but he could write it. So the Chinese translator uh, there um, would go back and forth. He could speak Portuguese, and so they would write in the sand. You know, I want to buy some of these guns. Yeah. Okay, how much do you want to pay for them? And uh, and they put on a big demonstration, and he ended up buying two uh, matchlock guns. And within 30 years, guns were all over Japan. In fact, the Japanese were making more guns than the Europeans were. Wow. And uh, they were making some pretty good stuff, too. So uh, it's like, you know, when the UFO crashes and they, and they dig it up and then and they start, you know, what, what do they call it? Um, when you uh, deconstruct something. Oh, or like reverse engineering? Reverse engineering, yes. <laughs> so instead of reverse engineering UFOs, they reverse engineered these guns. And the Japanese made very, very high quality weapons. Wow. Yeah. It's heavier than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. I guess it's because of the iron. Mm hmm Yeah, and the wood's very dense, too. And then this is all lacquered to protect the wood. Jap uh, Japan is a very uh, humid country. Mm hmm So uh, if you don't preserve your wood, sometimes it can swell. Um, is that why it's so dark? Or it's, like, basically black? Yes, it's a black lacquer that protects the wood. Uh, this is... There are very few guns I've seen with a black lacquer. Uh, usually they're the more expensive types. And you see, this... Uh, this barrel here is very interesting because it's got these ridge lines, which are extremely difficult to do here. They're almost like carved out of iron. The oh, iron yeah. work on this is just fantastic. Wow. It's like the, like the Very armor. high quality. That is very cool. Mm -hmm. So, Ben, I was thinking maybe we could write up some rules that would incorporate firearms maybe into your Dungeons & Dragons campaign. 
That could be pretty cool. We have fun. There are some rules for the archibus, mm -hmm. um, but it might be interesting to have a piece of art with somebody using one. Yeah, that would be cool too. Yeah. I'll have to draw that. Yes, mm -hmm. maybe using a, a variant of this of this guy, which yeah. would be really cool. Mm -hmm. And we do have gnome grenades, mm -hmm. so I was thinking maybe goblin guns. Goblin guns. You know, just an idea. I like it. We could have some fun with that. Yeah. And um, yeah, it would be uh, it would be something interesting to add to your Dungeons and Dragons campaign. Totally. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Okay. Well, you guys hope you guys like that, and we're gonna have more Japanese treasure coming soon. We're gonna do some more armor stuff, and um, we will see you guys next time. Bye bye. <laughs>